Please join me in welcoming Dr. Michael Capps from Epic Games to the stage to show off the next generation of the Unreal Engine running on Xbox 360. Michael, great to have you. Thanks, Chris. And I'm going to leave the audience in your capable hands. I'll do what I can. I appreciate it, sir. Totally have to buy a Zoom now. Okay, uh, I'm Mike Capps. I'm the president of Epic Games. Uh, I hope there's a few Xbox fans in the audience today. Not one, all right. But you may remember a game we made for the Xbox called Gears of War that we did with Microsoft. We've had really good success. Thanks. I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, so we've had really good success with Gears and also Unreal Tournament. Um, but as Chris mentioned, that's not all we do. We make the Unreal Engine, which has won the Game Developer Magazine's Frontline Award the last three years running. So it's been about a year and a half since we made Gears of War and launched it, uh, Holiday 06. A lot of people still consider Gears to be sort of the high watermark for technology and video game graphics. Um, but we've been pretty busy since that 18 months ago when we launched the game. We've added a lot of awesome new features to the Unreal Engine, and we've really optimized it for the Xbox 360. So I want you all to do a little thought experiment and imagine what Gears of War might look like if we were to launch it today. And I'm going to bring Tim Sweeney out. He's our CEO, and he's going to give you a glimpse into that future, tell you about the Unreal Engine. Good luck, Tim. Thanks, So now we're going to show you some of the things we've been working on since we shipped the original Gears of War game. Uh, we never stop working on new features in the Unreal Engine. It's, a, it's a, always a work in progress. We're always adding more. So one of the major new things we've added is ambient occlusion technology. This technology enables us to add much more realistic dynamic shadows to scenes using a pixel shader technique. So a pixel shader traverses every single pixel in the scene and looks at how light reflects around and uses that to generate much more realistic shadow highlights on the objects in the scene. You know, so you see much more definition in individual objects and they pop out from the backgrounds. This technique works uh, for characters as well. We've done significant work on the character pipeline. On the left here you see Marcus Phoenix as he appears in Gears of War. And on the right he's being rendered in our new character pipeline. You see there's much greater contrast in the shadows. Um, much greater specular lighting bouncing off of the thing. You see a lot more detail in the character overall. It is also a lot more efficient and enables us to render a lot more characters in scenes. If you remember in Gears of War, you fought the Locust Horde, where the Horde consisted of maybe like five or six Locusts. But now we can really build scenes containing hordes of creatures. And here we have over 100 creatures running around in real time using flocking technology. We've also improved the water technology on Unreal Engine 3. Besides the realistic water physics simulation running underneath, we also have realistic specular and environment reflections bouncing off of the water. So it captures much more of the realistic liquidy feel you see there. We also have more dynamic interaction with the water, so more realistic sound effects, more realistic splashes using particle systems. And this scales to very large environments. So you can build your game taking place on a deserted island, or you can build that jet skiing game you always wanted to build using Unreal Engine 3. The engine now scales to much larger scenes like that. Now, a matinee is the system we use to build all of the Gears of War cinematics, you know, the real-time cinematics that play back in engine. We've uh, substantially improved this to give, uh, to give artists movie director class control over all of the objects in the scene, over cameras, over cuts. And we have a real-time preview now in engine that gives you all the visual effects of the real cinematic uh, at a level that's not even seen in Hollywood now in their preview tools. We've also incorporated AGIA's soft body physics simulation tool, uh, which enables us to, to simulate objects that are realistically elastic and fluidy, like you see with this cube of meat we've built here. You, know, you can see the player can interact with that, push little pieces of it around, and it's all very elastic and buoyant. This also scales well to fluids. So here you have fluids moving around with viscosity and surface tension, retaining their shape. This enables artists to build environments that are much more organic and real-worldish. You can also destroy them. 
thing that we do after, after we spend a few years building a beautiful game world, the first thing gamers want to do is blow it up. And now they can do that. So we've implemented some real-time structural analysis tools in Unreal Engine 3 that can determine how objects break apart into pieces given stresses and strains. And here we have applied that so that we have a, a building built out of concrete with a steel structure underneath. And you can see the player can go around and blow holes in the concrete, destroy the structure of the level while the steel remains underneath. This is just one of the tools that enables designers to create far more realistic and destructible environments in future games. And these are just a few of the things we've been working on in Unreal Engine 3. We expect to have a lot more over the coming years as we learn to take more and more advantage of the Xbox 360's hardware power. Thank you.